Hello all. This week we're working on chi-squares. Chi-squares are the test we use um, if we are stuck with nominal level data. Ideally, in a perfect world, all of our data would be ratio level and we could run correlations or ANOVAs or t-tests. But occasionally, data collection is out of our hands and we are stuck with nominal level data. So, chi-squares are a way that we can make lemonade out of our nominal level lemons. So the example data set this week has two columns of data, sick versus not sick, and smoker versus non-smoker. Uh, now a much better way to collect this data would be to say measure the number of cigarettes smoked in a day, and then measure some ratio level measure of health, like, I don't know, resting heart rate or average life expectancy or something. Uh, but instead, this researcher chose to collect the data on the nominal level, and so we're going to analyze it with the chi-square and make the best out of it that we can. Uh, the first step within a chi-square is to make a pivot table of your data, just to organize the data and show us what we have. So I'm going to click on the insert menu and then pivot table on the left. I'm going to select all of my data. And then I'm going to have it put the data in cell E1 and click OK. So this gives me a blank pivot table. From here, I can drag the values I want into each spot. So I'm going to put smoker or not smoker in my row and sick or not in my columns. And then I'll put person down in the values. And so what Excel will do, it will count how many people, oh, this should be count of, I'm going to, right, I'm going to left click on that, do value field settings and do count. That, that's the count of how many people are healthy and a non-smoker, how many people are healthy and a smoker, how many people are sick and a non-smoker, and how many people are sick and smoker. Uh, and that's our, that's our observed values. That's how many people fall into each category within our data. The next step for a chi-square is to calculate our expected values. Now these are the values we would expect if the data was just randomly distributed in all of our four groups. Uh, so to do this, first thing we need to make our column totals. So we have non-smokers. I'm just going to copy this from the observe, the observe table above. There's non-smoker, smoker, smoker uh, healthy, and sick. And then we need to copy the column totals and row totals. This is 91, 30, 19, I'm sorry, it's 100 and 21 and then I'll sum those to the total. All right, and I have 121 cases and it's picking up 121 cases, so that's good. So to calculate the expected totals, uh, formula is the formula is expected cell count is equal to the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. So we'll take for this one for a healthy non-smoker we'll take the row total divided by the column total I'm sorry times column total divided by the grand total. And we get 75 people. So right away we can see that we have slightly fewer healthy non-smokers than we would expect. We'd expect about 75 if it was randomly distributed and we only have about 81. Okay, the next one will be row total times column total divided by grand total. And we got 24. So we have a slightly more healthy smokers. It's kind of weird. The next one will be row total times column total divided by grand total. That's 15.8. And then for this one it will be row total times column total divided by grand total. 
5.21. Okay, so right now we can see that there's some jickiness within our data. We have, here's what we observed, we have slightly more six smokers than we would expect. And we have slightly fewer healthy non-smokers. So something's going on in our data, but we, we just don't know exactly what it is just yet. So we need to calculate a chi-square to quantify what's going on. Now the formula for chi-square is pretty straightforward. It is observed minus expected quantity squared divided by expected. So we'll just start that down here and we'll get four different values for that because we've got to calculate it for each cell. So we'll do this first one. We'll take non-smokers who are healthy minus non-smokers who are healthy that we expected and we'll square that. And then we divide it by the value we expected for that column, for that cell. There you have it. So we need to do that um, three more times, one for each of our cell. So it's equals observed minus expected quantity squared divided by expected. There's two. There's observed minus expected quantity squared Right expected. And the final one. Observed minus expected quantity squared. That divided by expected. And then, so that's our chi square value for each individual cell. Then to get the total square, chi, chi square, we just sum that. And we got 10.37. That's much like the F statistic we got for the ANOVA or the T statistics we got for the T test. Uh, our chi-square value is 10.37, but that doesn't tell us much. We need to know the probability of getting this chi-square value. Uh, Excel has a function for that, and it is equals chisq.dist.rt, left parentheses, and you enter your chi-square value, comma, then you enter your degrees of freedom. Now for a chi-square, the degrees of freedom equals columns minus one times row minus one. So in this case, we have two columns and two rows. So two minus one times two minus one is one. So we have one degree of freedom. And there you have it. Our probability of this value being just due to random chance is less than, well, it's one, it'd be 1 1.2 cases per 1,000. It's 0 0.0012. So it's tiny. The probability that that is due to chance is tiny. There is something going on in our data uh, that means that shows sick people are not evenly distributed among smokers and non-smokers. So then we can look up here in our chi-square table, or our table of the chi values, to see where most of our chickiness is coming from. And we can see it's coming from the sick smokers. We have far more sick smokers than we would anticipate. So there is, there is a statistically significant difference between the healthfulness of smokers and non-smokers. Now, there's another option to get your chi-square value, and that is a function within Excel that is, uh, that uses your observed values and your expected values. It's a little bit easier, uh, and that just is equals chi dot, C 
C-H-I-S-Q dot T-E-S-T, left parentheses, and then you put in your observed values, Excel calls them actual values or actual range, highlight those four cells, comma, and then you put in your expected values, right parentheses, enter, and this takes us straight to our p-value without having to calculate uh, our chi-square value. Either way, same end result, p-value less, is less than 0.05, so it's statistically significant. Now, one thing you have to watch out for when you're running the chi-square is that you can't have cells uh, that are less than that less than five. Uh, your expected cell values have to be all greater than five. So you see this one's getting close, uh, but it's above five, so we're fine. But if you're running a smaller data set without as many cases, uh, just watch out that your, all your cells in your expected range are greater than five. All right, guys, I hope that helped. If not, shoot me an email to ashulltz at murraystate.edu, and I hope you have a great week. Thank you.